Welcome back to Wichita's Biz That Is. I'm Tim Witzman with the Wichita Independent Business Association. And our guest today is Sarah Bagby, the owner of Watermark Books. And we've talked about some of uh, Sarah's background and also the things that she's done to make the store part of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things you've been big on mm -hmm. is buying local. Mm -hmm. Tell yes. me what got you into that uh, whole frame of thought. Buying local. I Our store is located on a corner in Wichita that has retail. It's at Douglas and Oliver. And there are local businesses on every corner, on every corner mm -hmm. of that. And, and they're opening all the time. And, and um, we uh, invest in the neighborhood. We, are, we add value to that neighborhood. And as we see more sales shift to national or online, we find it more of a challenge. You know, we have these costs that an online retailer would not have to worry about. We have our footprint being rent and staff and knowledge. Right. And, and we know that our customers count on that. And um, if we lose those sales, if we become the mouthpiece, but we don't get the sales to follow it up, um, we become a showroom, basically. And so we have to find a way to either replace those sales or somehow get compensated for providing a service that we may not see the sales for. Well, there really is. This isn't just being sort of grumpy and local. Um, <laughs> there's actually an economic basis for this whole thing. Right. The way economies work is you'd like to import money and export goods. And I don't know if you folks out there know it, but in the United States, in terms of foreign sales, Wichita is the highest per capita exporter in the United States, more than anybody. Now what does that do? That brings a lot of money into the community. Um, but when you look at it differently, if you look at it from a smaller point of view, not the national, not, right. you look at the region, and it's this South Central Wichita region right. economy. And when we talk about exports, we mean stuff out of that area or into. Right. And what you'd like to do is bring money in and not put too much of it out. Exactly. So there have been a lot of studies of how that works. Um, and sort of the average is if you spend a dollar with a local company, about 60 cents will stay local. It isn't all going to stay local because they have to buy things from outside. Exactly. Even a small town starting imports practically everything until it builds up stores right. to provide those things. Well, if you spend that money at an, something that's owned outside, it's about 30 cents. Right. Now, here's the way that game works. If you go out and it's 60 cents and then 60% of the next and 60% of the next, about a dollar and a half actually is in the community. So that dollar became a dollar and a half. Mm -hmm. But if you do it outside, that dollar becomes 43 cents. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the death spiral of small towns. Right. Yeah. Because more and more, as they lose shops, begins to go outside. Mm -hmm. So um, WIBA has partnered with you. We had Sarah actually speak to a luncheon for us on this whole subject. And um, we're trying to get that word out there. It's, and it's, um, it's, it's a hard word to get across. I mean, all that makes sense. But to completely, and, and it's not as if someone or a, a consumer has to do all their shopping online. I mean, I mean in, in their local area. Uh, you know, you can make a commitment to do three out of five purchases or one out of four, you know, or three. Okay, do them all. That'd be great. But <laughs> <laughs> if you can't, totally there are possible. ways to um, come around to that. I mean, at times we do have to watch the bottom line. But if you take the long view, there have been studies that show that um, when governments are collecting bids, if they take the lowest bid and it's an outside company, they end up spending more and not benefiting as much financially as if they go for a higher bid, but the payroll and, and the, um, the taxes are collected from um, a company in their hometown. So you have to sort of take the long view. You can't just look at the what's right in front. So Agreed. And even beyond that, when you get into uh, online purchasing, even more goes out of the community. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean every single penny 
because yeah. even a large company, they may buy something from uh, Bombardier exactly. or Cessna mm -hmm. or Cargill mm -hmm. that's made here. But even more goes away. Right, because the, and, and a lot of states, we're pretty good in Kansas. Um, when online retailing um, began, there was no precedent for sales tax collection. Mm -hmm. um, and there was something called a use tax that someone like you or me, if we bought something from out of state or online, we, were we are supposed to put that down on our income tax and pay the sales tax. Almost nobody does. I we haven't do really business. done that. We get that from the state. We exactly. have to. Exactly. If we bought something like that and there's no tax on it, we have to file. Right. And there are companies that still don't do that. The major online retailer now collects sales tax in Kansas. But just to give you an idea of what, what a state might be losing is that Texas forgave a $360 million bill to an online retailer just so they could get up to date and start collecting. That was how much that state lost. And in a time when we're looking for money everywhere, and this is really not a new tax, if we're gonna collect sales tax on, if we're going to, if, if every uh, retailer collects sales tax, it's not a new tax because that new, that use tax is already in place. It's just closing a loophole. Well, and actually taxes do make a difference. I was up in New Hampshire. New Hampshire benefits, they don't have a sales tax. Mm -hmm. And people come from Massachusetts and from Vermont and yeah. from Maine over to, gee, I think I'll shop there. <laughs> right. Have you ever been at the Mall of America? Uh, I have not. <laughs> they have. They don't to... have sales tax on clothes. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a break here on Wichita's Biz That Is, and we'll be right back with Sarah Bagby. <laughs> 